The very first thing that put me off buying a resin 3D printer were the fumes that it gives off. It meant having it indoors would not be an option. So I thought I could keep it in the garage. Unfortunately, most resin works its best between 20 and 30 degrees. Being in the UK, my garage is always cold, so we need an outdoor enclosure to help control the temperature. My last attempt involved this grow tent and I lined the inside with 25mm Kingspan stuff. It was pretty decent but there was not much space and it would lose heat quite quickly. Let's use Blender to plan out our new enclosure design. It needs to fit the printer and a little heater comfortably. I'm using cubes for this design and setting the dimensions to the size of each object. For this upgrade, I'm going to use 50mm insulation, but you would get decent results with the 25mm stuff too. We can break the design down into three main parts, the outer shell, inner one and the lid. Each one overlaps by 50mm so that all sides have two layers of foam and none of the seams will line up which will improve heat retention. You can download this blender file from my Gumroad to give the design a closer look. Check out the description for a link to that and links to some of the products used in this build. Once we have an idea of what we're building, make a duplicate of all the panels and hit Alt R to reset the rotation. The sheet size of this insulation is 2400 by 1200, so we can lay the parts out to see how to efficiently use it. Then we can lay the panels out on the sheet. Looks like we will need two sheets for this build with some left spare. I printed off a couple of cheat sheets to keep an eye on while in the garage so we can make sure things are going to plan. Using a marker and a big ruler, we can measure out and mark up the panels we will need to cut. This 50mm stuff is pretty thick. I'm using a small handsaw and cutting only halfway at first to get the line right, then cutting fully through on the next pass. I struggled to get a true 90 degree cut here and should have used a big piece of wood while cutting to get a better angle. Once we have all of our panels, we can clean up any rough edges using a sanding block like this. We will be taping up the edges with foil later, so having a smooth finish will help at that stage. To stick everything together, silicon is great for the job. Use a square to make sure things are straight while it dries, and I'm using some paint pots and old bits of wood to hold things in place. Once the silicon is dry and you've done a shoddy job like me, there might be some bigger gaps in the seam. You can can cut off bits from a spare chunk of insulation and stuff them in. Now we can come in with more silicon and seal up all the edges. I filled this little spray bottle with water and a drop of dish soap. Spraying over the bead of silicon then running a finger along really cleans up the seal. Use a paper towel to clean the silicon off your hands. You probably won't use all the silicon in the cartridge at once, so when you're done, grab an old nitrile glove and snip off one of the fingers. Cover the nozzle, then squeeze in a little of the silicon, enough to cover the tip. This acts as a seal so you can come back to it days or weeks later. As you're building up the parts, try dry fitting the panels when you can, just to make sure things are going to plan. The reflective surface of the insulation is great for bouncing back the heat and keeping it inside for longer. Let's tidy up the exposed edges with this insulation tape. The one I have here is only 48 millimeters wide, so I'm needing to do two per edge. But if you can find a wider one at a decent price, that would be easier to fit. I'm using the snap off knife to tidy up any edges of the tape. There will be three wires entering the enclosure, the heater, printer, and temperature sensor. Measuring the biggest thing first, the heater plug gives us our minimum cutout size. I could have cut off the plug, but this gives us more flexibility in the future. Cutting out the inner hole, then expanding it by 50 millimeters around the edges on the outer wall means we maintain not having any double seams on the enclosure. I'm cutting off the corner of each to route the wires through. Then we can slot the pieces back in. All that's left to do is pop the lid on and switch on the heater. As you can see, it heats up nicely and retains it really well. Just what we need for cozy, predictable, successful prints. Thanks for checking out this outdoor enclosure build and hopefully you picked up some ideas for your own build. Any questions, drop a comment below. Don't forget to check out the Gumroad for sculpting resources and miniatures. Thanks to everyone supporting the channel on Patreon. And if you're interested in joining in, check the description. See you in the next one.